Amber snapped out of her reverie, her eyes wide open in wonder. She shook her head as if dazed, trying to take it all in, absorbing what she had read. Is everything all right? Jay questioned, noting Amber's uneasy demeanor. I'm not sure, Amber replied, indicating the journal in her hand. My name is Dr. Jane Gideon, Amber began, reading aloud from the journal she had found. The others had been summoned to the bridge and were now listening intently, desperate to know what Amber had discovered, except for Lottie and Sammy, who were in one of the cabins babysitting Trudy's daughter and Amber's son. Aren't you going to start with Once Upon a Time? Lex chirped up, chuckling at his own sense of humor, the others hushing him in response, telling him to be quiet. Amber gave Lex a look that said all that she thought about his joke. She cleared her throat and continued. I'm a lieutenant, one of the medical personnel on the USS Theodore Roosevelt, part of the United Nations Emergency Task Force Pacific Fleet. I have been helicoptered into the Chinese merchant vessel, Zhao Li, and will be recording my notes on my investigation in this journal in case I need to refer to my findings. The captain of the Zhao Li had radioed for immediate medical help, so my team and I have been deployed to assist. The Zhao Li is carrying invaluable supplies, which will be crucial to the success of the rendezvous, and it is imperative the ship proceed. So far, I have examined all the crew. The engineers have showed symptoms of the pandemic sweeping the world, but none of the other crew were infected. Yet, I have recommended the engineers be quarantined, also that the results of our findings be marked classified. Classified? Celine asked. That's odd. It wasn't exactly a secret that the virus had spread as an ominous pandemic around the entire world. Assuming she is referring to the virus, Amber replied. What do you mean? There was something else? Lex asked, as confused and concerned as were all the others. Could be. I don't exactly know. What follows next seems to be measuring the health of each of the crew, recording their medical records, Amber said, flicking through some of the pages in the journal. Here we go, Amber said to herself, finding the spot she'd been looking for. This is another entry, a few days later. She continued reading aloud. Sadly, the engineers have passed away, predictably succumbing to R18SYT which is accelerating within its mutation. So ends my observations of them in this journal. May they rest in peace. I will request evacuation for post-mortem study back at Base 12. Base 12? Wonder where that was? Slave pondered. Probably near Base 11, Jal said, causing the others to exchange frustrated glances at her. Jay couldn't help but notice Ram's expression clouding. Any idea? he asked. Not a clue, Ram responded. Go on, Amber, keep reading, Ram urged. As for the rest of the crew, they are now displaying symptoms, and we are all suffering, myself included. The main mystery to me is how this is spreading when the engineers have been isolated 180 degrees north, 27 degrees south. I am referring, of course, to the survival grid identified through the global initiative, rather than any nautical bearing. The pattern emerging seems to illustrate the diagnosis and treatment originally identified to be inadequate, and our separation from the rest of the task force continues. We are isolated, as with the other ships who have now been infected. So many questions, but so little time. God knows how much longer we have left before we, too, succumb. Suddenly, I don't think it was such a good idea coming on board the ship, Jell said, gripped by fear. Shut up and listen, Ebony chided. This is a couple of days later, Amber went on. I'm finding it hard to record my thoughts. The pain in my head is intense. Over half the bridge crew are now dead. The tissue samples I have taken show a foreign origin. Coupled with the broadcasts received from the other ships of the task force, this proves conclusively that the beta serum now being tested will not work as it was originally intended and outlined in our briefing papers provided to the military authorities. As a consequence, we are all suffering here on this ship, and I am at a loss at what to do. Amber skipped forward a few more pages. There was utter silence in the bridge, the only sound of the churning ocean waves outside as the cargo ship, 
the Zhao Li, as they now knew it was called thanks to the journal, continued drifting, the sea wind rattling the windows of the bridge. I don't understand why the requests for evacuation have been denied to the isolation sectors of the task force. Protocol clearly states that all those quarantined should not be ignored, yet radio contact has been lost, and we are seemingly left alone to die. I sit here, in the bridge, my pen and journal my only companions, as I look out at the ocean, and the occupants of the Zhao Li are passing away. My fingers ache. My body has convulsions. I, too, am not for this world much longer. The survival of our civilization is at stake. It's ironic how this curse upon our planet, something we cannot see, can wreak so much devastation, pain, and suffering. But this pales in comparison to a feeling of being misled. If the governments of the world were truly aware, as I suspect they might be, hopefully history will discover and record this act of utter sacrifice and betrayal. I have lived my life well. I have tried to help others, but I now know that help will not reach me in time. Amber squinted her eyes. The handwriting of Dr. Jane Gideon was increasingly hard to read, no doubt due to the difficulties the doctor was encountering at the time. This seems to have been written less than a day later, Amber explained. This will surely be my final entry. To my family, I love you. If you have survived this catastrophe, then I hope my words bring you comfort, if they ever reach you. If not, if you too are subject to the plague of our age, then I will see you again, if the good Lord is willing. Nothing can separate us, not even death will keep us apart. I sense the call and I am ready. I pray our humanity will survive and that whoever is responsible will be held to account. I leave this world as I came into it. Jane Gideon. And that's it, Amber said quietly, taking it all in as she put the journal down. The others around her were quiet as they also tried to assimilate what they had heard. It had been an eerie experience reading Dr. Gideon's words holding the very same journal that she too had once held, hearing the account of her last days on the face of the earth. It was all unsettling, tragic, though Amber took some comfort from Dr. Jane Gideon's obvious kindness and humanity to others. We're gonna be okay, aren't we? Trudy asked hopefully, breaking the silence in the bridge, the anxiety in her voice obvious. I don't know about that, Lex replied. All that stuff that doctor wrote? Sure as hell doesn't give me much hope. We all have a resistance, don't we? Celine added. That's why we survived the virus in the first place. Who knows? Jack said, muttering his thoughts aloud as he tried to make sense of it all. That doesn't sound to me like she was referring to just any kind of virus. Trudy broke down, sobbing as Celine comforted her. Well done, Jack, Ellie said, giving him a dirty look. What did I do? I'm just trying to help. I think we should all calm down and try to go over it together later, Amber suggested, rather than jumping to any kind of conclusions. Oh, really? Ebony said coldly. Well, I'll tell you this for nothing. I've already arrived at my conclusion, and we're in it, deep, right over our heads, just like those crew we buried. This isn't a ship. It's a floating tomb. <laughs>